Okay, and we're back. It's like a commercial break, and we're back. All right, so we said that the probability of getting heads the next time is one out of two. You've got one success out of two opportunities. But this is a, this is a huge issue right here. This is a, a big thing of why people lose their shirts when they gamble, because they'll be playing the game like roulette. And in the game of roulette, you can bet red or black, which means you've got 50-50 chances, right? And, and it'll happen like, that's the one where you spin the wheel and you drop the ball and, and that happens. And, and it, it lands in black or red or a number, and you can pick all sorts of different betting combinations. But what we have there is you'll see it'll drop in three blacks in a row. People say, oh, it's going to hit red next time because it hasn't hit red for a while. And, and that's wrong because they are independent events. And on the next trial, independence means that it is still going to have the same probability that it had the last time and it had the time before that. Granted, over the long run, due to the law of large numbers, over the long run, it will come back to 50%, but it's not going to be necessarily the next one. So let's go back for a second and talk about the law of large numbers, which means that if you do continuous, continuous, continuous flips of a coin, you're going to get closer and closer and closer to 50%. And this is why casinos make money. Because the odds for the, for the casino are in their favor. The casino does not play a game where the odds are in your favor. So over the long run, casinos end up making money. Sure, they'll have a payout to somebody for $1,000 or something like that. But over uh, the, all the other players, they're going to end up making money. And this is how insurance companies work, too, because you pay insurance for car insurance. And, and the chances are that you're going to have a wreck is actually very, very small. Even if you do and they pay it out to you, you've paid so much in in the insurance that it's going to end up covering that. And then everybody else who is paid in is going to cover that plus all that extra. So insurance companies are an example of the law of large numbers, how the law of large numbers applies, and that's why insurance companies make money. Okay, now we can actually make a relationship here between probability and correlation. And, and what that relationship is going to be is that probability is going to be a value between zero and one. Like correlation is a value between zero and one. And kind of like correlation where correlation of zero means that there is no linear relationship, a probability of zero indicates that there is absolutely no chance of that event happening. And yeah, we're going to have people say, well, you know, technically that there is no absolute zero probability because, you know, it just can happen and you don't know for sure and so like if you take this die and you throw it in the air and you sit there and say well there's a zero chance that it's going to stay in the air but, you know it might if there was some form of gravity well or something oh, whatever zero is not going to happen probability of one indicates that it is absolutely certainly going to happen if I throw the die, it's going to land somewhere. It's going to land. Well, it could get stuck in the air because of a minor black hole. No. No, it's, it's, it's going to land. With that, we're going to have some other information, okay? Here, here's this history of probability, and it was actually done. And it says by a group of French mathematicians that looked at games of chance in which all outcomes were, were equally likely. It, probability is first actually studied because people wanted to gamble and take advantage of it. That's the whole reason, okay? And what we have to keep in mind is that when we talk about uh, events and we talk about probability, probability does not have to mean that everybody in your thing has an equally likely chance of having success. Here I've got to die and if it's fair, every side has an equally likely chance of coming up. But what if this die wasn't fair? What instead of a 1 and a 2 and a 3 and a 4 and a 5 and a 6, I had a 1 and a 1 and a 3 and a 4 and a 5 and a 6, which, which you could have. It could be a specially marked die for some purpose like that, which means that the probability of getting a 1 is 2 out of 6 because there are two successes and everything else is 1 out of 6. If you look at M&Ms, M&Ms are not equally distributed. When you take a look at them, 20% tend to be blue and red and brown and orange, I think, and then yellow and green is, is like 10% each or something along those lines. So they don't have to be equally likely. 
Okay, and then there's this thing called personal probability, which is your opinion. And just like when you're in a relationship, your opinion just doesn't matter. Keep that in mind. And your girls say, well, my opinion matters. No, no, whatever. All right, two requirements for a probability. Probability has to be between a number zero and one, and we write the probability as P of event A, and here's the actual probability we can set up as a mathematical symbol. Zero is less than or equal to because it's gotta be between zero and one. Zero means no probability of it happening at all. Zero is less than or equal to the probability of event A is less than or equal to one. And if I wanted to say the probability of pulling out a red card, I would say P parenthesis red, close parenthesis. If I want to talk about the probability of rolling a four, P parenthesis four, close parenthesis, that's how we would write it. Okay. Something has to happen. This is a really important piece of this, is that if, if I roll this die, I'm going to get a side. It, it's not like it's going to land on its edge, it's not going to land on a quarter. If I, if I roll this die, it's going to land on a side. If I flip a coin, it's going to land heads or tails. It's not going to land on its edge. It can land on its edge? No, it's not. It can't land on its edge. Not in a, in a reasonable situation. Yeah, if you throw it into jello or something like that, it could land on its head. Okay? People say, well, I saw it at a wrestling match. It's because they hit a crease or something. No, it's on a flat surface, the solid, it's not going to happen. But what we have to go with this is that something has to happen. So if I take all those probabilities and I add them together, they're going to sum to one. And here's the basis of a Venn diagram. We've got the universe here, also known as the sample space. Here is the probability of everything happening. I take all the probabilities, that sum is going to be one. All right, with that information, we have something called the complement rule. Now the complement is, is very important here. When you talk about geometry, you talk about complementary, which means two angles add up to 90 degrees. Here, what we're talking about is the probability of event A and the probability of event A not happening or not event A, which we can write as, as A and its complement. So we've got the probability of A and the complement of A. So the probability of A is equal to 1 minus the complement of A. Here's our sample space right here. Here's the probability that event A happens. Outside that is the probability that event A does not happen. And that's known as this complement. So not A could be called the complement and we've got event A. Now, there are a couple different ways that we can write this. We're going to start off with, okay, so the probability of A plus the probability of the complement of A, A and not A, has to be equal to 1. But I can write the complement of A a couple different ways. I could write it as the probability of not A, which is how we really talk about it, not A. I've got A, I've got not A. So th thinking about this, the probability of me pulling out a 4 from a deck of cards, there are 4 4s out of a deck of cards, is 4 out of 52. This would be the probability of me not pulling a 4, which would be any other card. That would be 48, because there's 48 other cards. And if you don't know that, then we can talk about that in a second. The other way that we could say this is the probability of A, and we have an apostrophe here, prime, if you're in in calculus, we talk of that, that is called the derivative. We're not talking the derivative. This is just not A, the A prime, but we'll just call it not A. And A plus not A is going to equal one. So that means that if I'm looking for the complement of A or not A, because this is an equation I could solve, and that's what that slide said, if I subtract the probability of A from both sides or the probability of not A from both sides, I would end up with that the probability of A is equal to 1 minus the probability of not A, or the probability of not A is equal to 1 minus the probability of A. So since this is 4 out of 52 for the probability of me drawing 4, 4 cards out of 52 that are 4, the probability of not A would be 1 minus that 4 out of 52, oh, which would be 48 out of 52. And, and it's time to take a break.